England 41-18 over Italy. Goody, what were you, what'd you make of it? Hey, mate, we're back. We're back. We're above Scotland in the league. Table, standings, call it what you will, mate. Eddie Jones, you know, just delivers, mate. 41-point victory. 41, no, I can't even get that excited about it. I mean, ah. Uh, well, Eddie and I were pretty happy afterwards. But. Yeah, they go, I mean, they're going to be, right? You, you, you put 41 points on any team, um after a defeat the week before and the negativity around the performance. Uh, you could see there was a mentality shift in how we were trying to attack. We weren't very good at it at times, uh, but at least the intent was there. But, I mean, the disappointing thing for me is you play in Italy at home. You've got players in the squad like Randall, uh, like a dog Roo. You know, Ellis Genge, I thought you played quite well the week before. You know, you drop him and, and, and bring in Mako, who hasn't played. It, clearly, Eddie Jones is... is no interest in evolving and, and giving others opportunities in the Six Nations. He's got a mindset of, I just want to win the Six Nations. I've lost to Scotland. The only way I'm going to win the Six Nations is to win every other game. So I'm just going to go with type and what I know. And he picked a team, brought George Ford back in. He you know, did reasonably well. I'll put some width on the ball. The big thing for me is Owen Fowles really happy about the performance. I thought he was garbage and I, I don't want to be horrible. He's holding England back. He's playing 12. He dropped the ball a few times. Yes, he's the captain. Eddie's not going to make any changes. Let's be honest. You know, he's he does what he wants to do, and no matter how much we beat the drum, and everyone said it around other players like Sam Simmons, um, you know, is he going to listen to anyone? No chance. There's still a massive hangover, I believe, and you saw that in the performance around the World Cup in 2019 uh, and the final. You think back to the semi-final and the quarter-final against Australia and New Zealand. The intensity, the accuracy, you know, the attack and intent that we showed in those games compared to where we are now, we're quite sluggish. Um, and, you know, I think Italy were hard done by by the ref as well at times on a few things. Uh, but oh, don't get me started on that. We'll, 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 we'll chat about them as well because there were a couple of things uh, that were clear, um, you know, talking points. But the intent was there for England, the accuracy wasn't. They're still shell-shocked probably from losing to... Scotland last week, but also I just think within the group there's a fear and they won't say anything, but Eddie Jones rules with fear, doesn't he? And then Fowles, your captain, it's like they're just looking for someone to tell them what to do. Um, and when Fowles, your captain, and not playing particularly well, he doesn't add a lot in attack for me at the minute. Um, you know, we saw that against Scotland where Ollie Lawrence waited 60 odd minutes to get a pass and then get dropped. Yeah, and then this weekend, um, you know, the forward Farallax is, is back. Dan Robson comes off the bench, makes a massive impact instead of Ben Young's. Um, but we're never going to know anything because he's just going to keep picking who he wants to pick. And that will be, you know, the usual the usual mob, which is prerogative, but it doesn't stop us from being able to discuss it and debate it. And we go to Wales next up and you could see him picking his usual team and us doing a job over Wales uh, down there, which will kind of justify what he wants to do. So we're allowed to debate it. It was there was more intent from England, but it was inaccurate. And Italy, they were never going to win the game. Let's be honest. But there were a few things that went against them on the day. If I played like Faz played, he would never speak to me ever again. I played half as bad against Newcastle when he was on holiday <laughs> in Dubai, and he ain't spoke to me since. He ain't spoke to me since that day because he thought I was shit, and that was it. Full stop. Well, worst I've seen him play. Worst I've seen him play for England, and. Yeah. That is a real, is it a worry or a concern? Because he'd normally back it up. If he's been shit one week, he will rock up the next week because he's a world-class player and it means a lot to him. The worrying thing for me is that he had a poor, poor game against Scotland. So you're thinking the game against Italy, he's coming in, he's like, right, I'm going to prove everyone wrong. They're having it. And they did have it off the ball. And <laughs> What do you mean? The ref had it as well in both ears. Well, you saw the interaction with Mike Adamson as well. And we can talk about the referees. And this is, I like my, Mike Adamson. I've commentated on loads of games, Edinburgh, loads of games for Glasgow, where he's been refereeing, Scottish referee, and he's been standout, standout performances. But I, I look at that game at the weekend, and there's, and there's loads that we can talk about that, that have come from it. But just going back to England's performance, there's nothing in that that I'm like, that would worry a big team, and I mean that with with all due respect to Italy, who I actually thought, I thought Italy looked all right, and this is what I mean, and this we can come to the Twitter thing about my comments around 
Johnny May's try and it shouldn't have been a try. And the reason why I think that, because I think Italy were hard done by on that and, and, a, and a few occasions. And a lot of people call it for Italy to be thrown out and people are like, yeah, but it's not to do with Johnny May's try or a yellow card not going to Farrell. It's to do with the fact they've lost 26 or whatever games it is in a row. I was like, yeah, but you, they're going to be just on performances, aren't they? Because they're a young team now. Mm. They started that game incredibly well. I thought they looked really good in the sacks and good players. But I've been in a Scotland team before where the referee can take the wind out of your sail. And if you're, going to, if you're going to win a game and, and, and upset a team, the bounce of the ball needs to go your way sometimes. If you're, if, if you're not an England, you know, Wales and Ireland, Scotland, New Zealand, South Africa. I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I wouldn't put Australia in that mix either as well. <laughs> um, but if you're a top, top team, like you, you play well or whatever, you don't need the bounce of the ball. But when we've seen Italy beat France, for example, in recent years, or they had that win against South Africa. Yeah. Like in recent years as well. Yeah, in years, Italy. You need everything to go your way. And part of that is the decisions around the, the referee. And I just thought, I looked at that game and I felt for Italy because you can see how hard they're trying. You can see that they pick some young players and it wasn't the bounce of the ball. They just didn't get the, the rub of the referee. You wonder whether that's Mike Adamson's ex- inexperience, Joy Neville as a TMO, not having the experience to, to call it and, and to kind of tell him, no, this is... This is the case. And it's easy, again, when you sit at home and you're on your phone and you're on Twitter, it's easy to pass judgment. I can't imagine how difficult it is. But it's our job, it's my job, to pass opinion and pass judgment. It's not really being horrible. Like I'm backing up what I'm saying with, with some of it. I mean, for me, Faz's hit on Varney, it is a penalty at least. It's late. Yeah, very late. It's, he's angry for some reason. So there's no need for him to do that. He's whacked him in the back. He's gone down with his head. Or is he, is he holding his head? Well, that means he's connected with his head there. So if he's going down with his head, he's connected with his head. And what they go, they go back and look at it, don't they, to see if it's high good. By him going down with his head, are you saying that he was trying to fake an injury to try and get away with the fact that he's belted him in the face or not? Only he will know. But my point is being is that... Are you happy to put your name to that, Jim? Put me name to it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't put me name to it because I don't want to say the player's going down injury and he's hard, he's an ordinary. But you look at that. So from Farrell's perspective or from the viewer's perspective, the referee and Joy Neville on TMO, he's connected with his head. So it's, head, it's a head-on-head collision because he ain't, hit, he ain't hit his knee. So if you go on Farrell's expression, Farrell was hitting late, high, with his head, on head. So in the framework, that'd be a red card, wouldn't it? They're saying that it was chest on back. So his initial contact point was with his chest. And that's what World Rugby are trying to outlaw, where the chest on chest tackles or chest on back tackles, those upright tackles, always lead to a head on head or pretty much always lead to a head collision somewhere down the line, which is the reason behind all this framework. So I'm not saying it was a red card offence at all. Um it was definitely late. And I think it's all around that. It's experience and the wording. So where Joy Neville's buzzed into Mike Adamson and said, oh, we need to look at this. She hasn't said, and she should, perhaps should have said, and led the conversation around, okay, out of the framework, we don't think it's, uh, uh, you know, a, a nasty t- challenge. It's not a penalty for, for height-wise because they felt that it was chest on back. But she should have then said, but it is a late tackle. And that, that's the argument, in fact. And the two points about it, we'll come back to Johnny Mays in a minute. England were 15-8 up going into the last play of the game of the first half. So England were 15-8 up going into the last play of the first half. Johnny Mays scores that try to go 20 points to 8 up. Italy get a penalty in the, in the second half, 20 points to 11. Anthony Watson, when he intercepts it, it's 20 points to 11. He goes the length, scores under the sticks, 27-11. If it gets chalked off, which... It should have done because it was a late tackle. Italy have got a very simple penalty there to to kick it goal to make it 20 points to 14. Now, I'm not saying Italy would win the game, but when Jim's talking about the points of not getting the rub of the green, judging on performance, that scoreline could have been a bit different. England were always going to win it, right? But if it's 20 points to 14, instead of it being 27 points to 11, and that turn, that flick of the, the try because of Farrell's action... You're looking at, a, you know, Italy are in the game with 55 minutes gone. 